We are glad you're with us tonight. I'm Lynn Brooks. Terry Brewer is off. Topping our newscast this evening, a preliminary plan to rebuild Tuscaloosa has now been unveiled. A look at what that includes and to show you how you can share your opinion is our top story at five. Rebuild Tuscaloosa Task Force leader John McConnell tells us they the draft was a culmination of ideas from residents, business owners, city leaders, and the Tuscaloosa Forward Committee. The plans include green ideas in those affected areas, like new pathways for walking and better connected neighborhoods. McConnell says this is a big step in the rebuilding process. Okay. Uh, we've reached a milestone in the planning process now. The consultants have delivered the vision portion of the plan to the mayor as he requested. And uh, he's reviewing that now. The task force members have it as well. Uh, the final document will also include an implementation strategy that's forthcoming, and, and they'll have that prior to August 1st. The city is hosting a community preview of these plans, and that's this Saturday, July 23rd at Central High School Gym. It will be a come and go event. It starts at noon and runs through 5 p.m. Members of the task force will be on hand to answer all your questions. Today is the last day to apply for federal aid to recover from the storms. FEMA representatives spent time at Bama Fever at Midtown Village today. So far, more than 80,000 people have applied for assistance. Today, FEMA had their safe room and doghouse displays out there, explaining to people how to be better prepared for natural disasters in the future, like the devastating tornado that ripped through Tuscaloosa April 27th. FEMA mitigation expert Rick Burgess says safe rooms can serve more than one purpose for a family. We found that you could take a safe room that will withstand an EF5 tornado and combine it with another use in your home or small business. And that would be like a closet or a utility room like for your washer and dryer or even a bathroom can be converted or built as a safe room so it serves dual function so that the cost of the safe room is actually reduced because you're uh, also using it for another purpose. You still have time to apply for FEMA grants and loans. We will have much more on that coming up later on WVUA News at 5, so stick around. Well, the crimson and white and orange and blue are coming together, this time not on the football field, but for tornado relief. It's called the House United through Habitat for Humanity. Originally, the group was scheduled to build in Baldwin County, but after the April storms hit Tuscaloosa, these students decided to help rebuild the Druid City. Students tell WVA when the disaster hit, it put a whole new perspective on the rivalry. All over Auburn, faculty, people that have been there, alumni, and we just really wanted anyone and everyone to come together because people in Auburn have wanted so badly to be able to help with relief but no one's had like a specific place to go. So we were really glad that this came up. I think um, rivalry is one thing, but cohabitation and togetherness is the greater goal. The goal this week is to build an entire house for a family who lost everything in the storm. And here's a neat story for you. New life is taking root in a Tuscaloosa neighborhood that was destroyed by the tornado. Here it is. It's in the form of corn. A single stalk of corn has sprouted in the Cedar Crest neighborhood. That neighborhood, you might recall, took a direct hit on April 27th. Dozens of homes there were destroyed, but now this one single stalk has some people wondering, how did it get here? Former Tuscaloosa Mayor Al DuPont lives near Cedar Crest. He says the strange phenomenon can be attributed to the sheer strength of the storm. I wasn't too surprised because uh, I had uh, in, in my utility room back there, I had uh, a lot of seeds that I had to garden in here myself and it gets scattered all over the place and, and I had some corn seeds over there so it must have been the hurricane just scattered the seeds over there. So that might be Al DuPont's corn. Who knows? That stalk of corn is about two feet tall. We'll, we'll watch its progress for you. Other news tonight, a Pennsylvania restaurant has an interesting policy that's getting worldwide attention no children younger than six are allowed to eat there. The owner says there is no place for small children in his restaurant. Here's the story. You can't miss the signs on the outside, on the inside, printed notices on the tables. The policy is clear. If you're younger than six, please dine elsewhere. The response to this now international story. Well, we're booked solidly all night. Uh, last night, interestingly, uh, before the ban took place was the biggest night in our history. 
a show of support, people coming in, giving me the thumbs up. McDane's owner Mike Vuig says he changed the policy based on customers' requests. He says the support is 11 to 1 in favor of the child ban. Thousands of letters and emails. We're with you. Uh, we're glad you raised this issue. We too have had uh, circumstances that you describe in, the, in your various interviews of having meals ruined uh, by uh, improperly supervised children, so we're, we're with you. The debate has clearly struck a chord all over the world. This is the 61st interview I've done this week. And I, I never imagined, and I didn't seek this. Um, I'm big in Sydney. We did three uh, radio stations in Sydney, Australia, uh, one in uh, New Zealand. I did a primetime TV show in Canada last night. I did national Canadian radio. Not all the responses are positive. Some parents want to take their whole family out to dinner here, young kids included. The only thing for this particular place, I do understand that the families have been coming here for quite a few years, and now that this is set in place, it is a big disappointment for them. Now when families with children under six years of age try to eat at McDane's restaurant, they're told to go across the street. The restaurant there has a sign in the window that says kids are welcome.